Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ray and I just finished doing my second year of physics here at Cambridge and in the summer of 2019 I achieved an A star and A level for maths. Now the exam board I did was AQA and we did further statistics and decision also known as discrete maths as our applied modules. So if you did that, that's fantastic. But if not, you should still find a lot of the information in this video valuable. But yeah, anyways, I will go through my workflow, the resources I use and any tips I have. And there will be timestamps and links to like anything I mentioned in the description down below. So do check that out during the video. But before I get started, I want to mention something about like staying motivated for A-level maths. So I think in my first topic test for maths, it was on complex numbers and I ended up getting a D in that topic test. And I thought because this is like the first bit of A-level for maths that I just could not like I was just terrible and I couldn't do like A-level of maths at all because it was supposedly meant to be like the easiest topic. So don't be disheartened if you like do bad initially or on like the first few topic tests. And I just kind of stuck to it and I kept like trying to improve and being intentional about improving and like making sure like I was understanding the material and getting better. And despite people doing better than me in the first topic test and getting like higher than my D in complex numbers, I stuck to it and I ended up being the only person in my school to get an A star in A level for maths, despite people like doing better than me in the first few topic tests. So don't be disheartened and just like keep to it and stick to it. So I will quickly outline my A level workflow, but I have explained this in more detail in my A level workflow video, which should be linked above somewhere right now. So it started off with the specification. So I got the specification from the exam board website. For me, that was AQA. And I kept it on Google Drive because on Google Drive, I could highlight and annotate the spec without having to print it out. So I just used the spec to make sure like I was covering all the points that we had to in lessons. And I kind of knew where the lessons were heading because generally the teachers teach in order of the specification. So going to lesson, I would kind of know what we were going to be learning that lesson. And I would sit down and make an effort to understand and learn the material, ask questions during lesson and make any notes. Now, on the weekends, when we finished any large topic, I would turn these notes into flashcards and supplement them with like any online A-level further maths material. And what I could turn into flashcards, I did turn into flashcards, and what I couldn't, I just did more practice questions for. Now, I put all my flashcards into a digital flashcard app called Anki, and if you don't know how to use Anki, I have a video about that as well, which should be linked above right now. But generally, the kind of flashcards I had was like methods, so finding the uh, determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix, uh, which were just a method we had to memorize or like or like hyperbolic substitutions for some integrals or even the complementary functions for like some second order differential equations. There are a bunch of things in further maths that you can make flashcards for, especially for the applied modules like further statistics and decision for me. And if you want to see how I made my flashcards, then there will be a link in the description down below to a place where you can download my flashcards for A-level further maths and then just get a sense of how I made them. And don't be too strict in making flashcards for like a pure maths because you won't be able to many in many other cases and you will sort of have to do more practice questions. So now further maths required the most amount of practice for me as of all my subjects and I would consistently be doing practice questions throughout the year either through homework we were being given or through finding topic tests or like practice questions on websites like physics and maths tutor which I will talk about later in the video. So I would do these throughout the year and consistently and I would just make sure I'm like keeping this information taking over especially for a lot of the pure content which I may not be able to make flashcards on too easily. And then about two to three months before my exam, I started doing every new specification past paper. So I did a few old spec past papers here and there, but generally the old spec past papers weren't too useful. And I just did like a lot of the new spec papers and the specimen papers. And I also used the AQA teaching guidance, which had a bunch of practice questions as well, which didn't have solutions, but was still really valuable in attempting as well. So some of the questions were really quite difficult and I have a video on how I tackle difficult questions, which should be linked above somewhere right now. But for these questions, if I didn't understand the mark scheme when I got around to marking it, then I'd usually go to teachers and have them explain the question to me or potentially ask friends who I think could do the question. Then I would add anything I learned from doing these questions or past papers onto a mistakes document and I'd go over the mistakes document like kind of consistently throughout the year. So I'd find myself making some mistakes out of habit. So I tried to develop a ha habit of finding these mistakes as well by like adding them onto a document and then noticing trends in the mistakes I make and then like turning that into a bullet point on this document and then reading through this document like before doing any practice paper or before doing my mocks or something and that would remind me of what mistakes to be looking out for what and which mistakes I end up making most often when doing these like papers. So that basically summarizes my workflow as for some resources which I found to be really useful and uh, the first was Jack Brown or TL Maths as he's known by now. So if you go on YouTube and search TL Maths and you can find his channel here and if you go to like videos uh, then you should see a bunch of his videos for A-level maths and further maths. 
Um, but if you go to tlmaths.com, uh, which is his website, if you click right here, then if you go to A level Fev Maths and then like pure or something, then you should find it in order of specification. So if I go to like matrices, then I can find all his videos on matrices, so like determinants. And then I can just sort of see this and I can see the spec point at the top as well. So this was particularly good for learning some materially maps if my teacher didn't explain it too well. And in this case, um, I didn't watch every single video he made. I watched a few videos which were out at the time, but I also watched videos by Exam Solutions as well, who had some really great videos for A-Level for Maths 2. So if I go to Exam Solutions and go to A-Level, then I can also find uh, Fev Maths if I scroll down. So if I go to AQA, and then I can find further maths over here, so like further statistics. If I go to tutorials, then I can find a bunch of videos on like some stuff in further statistics and click on this and then just watch the video on it and then even attempt some of the questions to do with it. So this was also a really great resource I used. It's much fuller now, or the website has a lot more resources now than when I sat the A-levels two years ago, so I'd really recommend checking out. My school also signed up for a resource, Integral Maps, which had a really good set of practice questions for A-level further maths. Uh, so if your school doesn't use it, then I would recommend like asking your teachers to check it out because it can be a really good resource and have some like a great set of questions for further maths. So I found those to be really useful because the solutions were quite comprehensive and often when I didn't get a question, the solution would make a whole lot of sense. And it was just a useful place for additional questions, which were never released by any exam boards, and they were just written by the folks over integral maths. And then finally, I would do past papers, which I talked about a bit before as well. And that was usually the specimen papers, which they had written for the new spec for A-level further maths, or like papers from other boards as well, because there is quite a big overlap between the content in like AQA for me, and then at Excel or like OCR MEI. Um, and stuff like that. So now I have a few tips for further maths, and the first is be intentional. And this requires you to like notice these feelings of confusion within yourself, like say during a lesson, and then be intentional about how you're going to tackle it or improve. Now some people end up saying like, oh, I'm gonna do every single textbook question, and that would include like textbook questions for topics which they're really comfortable with, or like say they're doing every single past paper, or like every single past paper question, or everything on like this set of websites. And whilst that can be good, you want to consider what you want to improve the most on. And this requires noticing any feelings of confusion, say during the lesson. And I regret not doing this sooner in the year, because when I started like being intentional and being proactive and trying to improve, and like thinking about which topic I have to improve on the most, rather than just generally saying like, oh, I just need to improve in like fair maths generally. Once I started thinking more specifically, I found my like knowledge to feel less superficial and I had a much better understanding of everything that was going on. So basically notice these feelings of confusion when like you are say doing a question or when you're learning content in class and then try to tackle those feelings as soon as possible because it may like tackling these feelings of confusion just feels really nice as well. And finally understanding the material which can make further maths enjoyable for you. And it actually helps you like be able to answer the questions, which is also great because you can get more marks. So my next recommendation is looking for geometric interpretations or trying to understand the material as best as possible. So when you do like matrices, you see like a rotation matrix and you're like, why the hell is a rotation matrix defined like that? And that's because you sort of have to like know the essence of matrices to be able to understand why. And there is a really good YouTube video called, uh, well, series called Essence of Linear Algebra by Free Blue One Brown. So if I search es Essence of Linear Algebra, Free Blue One Brown, I can find the playlist over here. And uh, like, whilst the whole playlist is not useful for A-level for maths matrices, the, uh, I would still recommend watching like a good chunk of it, like to do with the determinant or matrix multiplication and stuff like that, because you find that matrices is actually a really, really beautiful idea and has some like fantastic geometric interpretations. And once you understand it to that level, it just makes the process of learning it so much easier because you understand the bigger picture in this case. And you also like can tackle the questions so much more quickly as well. And basically when I watched the series, matrices became my favorite topic and they felt so much more natural to me or felt so much more intuitive because I understood what was going on behind the scenes. And I didn't think, oh, a rotation matrix is just a zero, one, one, zero for like rotating by 90 degrees. And this can also apply to like finding the shortest distance between like two vector equations of a line. Um, and just understanding the geometric interpretation of that just makes the problem so much simpler. And that when it comes to like doing this problem, you don't have to like memorize a method for finding the distance between like the shortest distance or something. You actually like have an understanding of what, why this is being done because you understand like you have to dot products with one line, you have to dot products with another line and stuff like that because at right angles and the perpendicular distance is shortest, stuff like that. So understanding the geometric interpretation just makes some of the problems so much simpler. So when possible, do try to 
do that. So next thing I wish I did more was teaching and asking friends. So I remember when we were learning about second order differential equations, there were just some things which I just didn't understand. And I felt too uncomfortable asking like friends in lessons to teach it to me or something. But when they did, it just made so much more sense than when the teacher was explaining it. So I recommend doing that or even teaching information which you sort of think you understand to others because teaching is a really good way of making sure you understand the concepts. And I mean, in reality, if you're helping like one or two other people out in your lesson, you're not really making much of a difference to grade boundaries anyway. So there's no reason to be like selfish and just be like, oh, I'm not gonna help out anyone else because there are literally tens of thousands of people doing further maths in the country. And if you help like one or two other people out, then you're not making too much of a difference. Also, if you really want to push yourself and really improve your problem solving skills, then do check out some step questions. And if you aren't sure what step is, then I do have a video about it. And you can watch like the first bits of the video. Um, but if you're applying for like Cambridge maths or like work maths or like Imperial or something, then you will likely have to sit step. So getting ahead on that sooner can be quite useful. But even if you are not planning on sitting step because of course you're applying for it does it require it, then still doing like a few questions here and there can be really useful because it just helps you like engage with these difficult ideas in maths much more. And then like the A-level for maths question just seems so much simpler in comparison to step questions if you've got some like pretty decent ass step questions. Now so some specific advice for discrete maths. I recommend making flashcards on like the algorithms and like any definitions for like say graph theory or something because that can get a bit tedious and if you don't know the precise definition of like things in graph theory then it can make the questions much more difficult to understand. So I remember making a bunch of flashcards for discrete but do check out my flashcards in the description in case you need one to. And I would also recommend doing the old spec questions for discrete because I found the old spec questions for discrete to be quite similar for the new spec questions for the discrete especially for AQA. And also flashcards do work well for for statistics too. And I would also recommend getting quick at using distributions on your calculator. So like the exponential distribution or like uh, being able to do chi-square tests on your calculator or if you have a graphing calculator that is, or being able to like use a Poisson distribution, normal distribution, binomial, everything. Just being able to do that quickly and well in the exam can save you a bunch of time too. So anyways, I hope some of that information was useful and gives you a better understanding of how you should be studying for further maths. For me, I found further maths to be the most conceptually difficult subject to understand. But I also found it to be the most enjoyable and most rewarding because like when I understood these difficult ideas finally for the first time or it just clicks in my head or like I was getting some difficult questions right, then I really enjoy that feeling and I just like, I just really liked the maths today level. So I would recommend like be intentional and make small consistent improvements throughout the year. Don't worry too much like if your first few topic tests end up going badly, as long as you're being intentional and finding like the ways you have to improve between tests and then practicing and being proactive and everything like that, you should do pretty well. I'd also recommend watching my A-level maths video uh, on how I got an A-star in A-level maths because I do give some advice there as well, which I haven't given in this video, which is still related to maths. And if you want to like learn more uh, about how I studied for my A-levels, I also have a playlist on how I studied effectively for GCSEs and A-levels, which should be linked above someone right now as well. So do check that stuff out and hopefully you found the video useful and I'll see you next time. Bye!